Okay, please find a comfortable and relaxed posture. Keep your back straight as much as you can. And gently close your eyes. Take a few deep, long breaths. Breathe in through your nose and breathe out through your mouth. Do it few times. Breathe in, let in in, breathe out, let in go. Breathe in peacefully, breathe out peacefully. And same time, make sure to relax your body like your peaceful breath. And slowly bring your attention to the moment. You all are here sitting peacefully. We are about to learn something, we are about to practice. Be grateful for this moment, your commitment, your dedication to your practice. Usually we are running around busy mentally and physically. Sometimes people don't have time to sit, to practice, to find a peaceful and relaxed time. But among those all people, you are fortunate to have a place to come and sit to find nice people, noble friends. Therefore, before we start our practice, you can appreciate your practice, your practice place, and your dedication to your practice. With having that appreciation, we can start our practice and gently bring your attention to the environment, to this room, it is peaceful, stillness, experience the stillness, peacefulness.
mindfully bring attention to your breath. Your inner and outer breath. Without forcing your breath, controlling your breath. Just allows your body to breathe naturally. Mindfully observe your inner and outer breath. Without worrying, wondering about future or past. Breathe in mindfully, breathe out mindfully. Let's spend silent moments with your breath. Sometimes your mind is like an ocean. When we go to the ocean, we can see the beauty. We can listen to the sound, the waves. It is peaceful and relaxed. Your mind is same. But sometimes it is dangerous. It is same like waves. There are waves one after one, one after one. Your mind is same, thoughts are coming and going. Thoughts are rising, thoughts are remaining, thoughts are disappearing. That is the nature of our mind. Therefore, whenever you are having thoughts, just know you are having thoughts, mindfully come back to your practice. If you are deeply focusing on your breath, you can see 
subtle changes on your breath like long breath and short breath if you notice you are having long breath think to yourself i am having long breath if you are having short breath observe i am having short breath <clears throat> Breathe in mindfully, breathe out mindfully. When you are inhaling, you know that your body is inhaling. When you are exhaling, you know that your body is exhaling. Now again mindfully take few deep long breaths. Breathe in peacefully and breathe out peacefully. And also it is perfect time to change your posture, move your body around if you want. Make sure to find a relaxed and comfortable posture, which is very important for your practice. And let's just start our loving kindness practice.
with having kind and compassionate thoughts towards yourself. Please repeat these three words to yourself. May I be content. May I be patient. May I be healthy. May I be content. May I be patient. May I be healthy. Contentment is the greatest wealth. As a self-loving kindness practitioner, you're never going to judge yourself, you're never going to compare yourself with others, you're always patient and diligent with yourself. Therefore, Repeat to yourself, may I be content. The quality of patience is very important to have in our daily life. It is important with your practice with your job, with your regular life. Therefore, understand how important to practice patient. Repeat to yourself, may I be patient. Also, it is very important to find your mental and physical wellness. This practice is always very important for you. Therefore, repeat to yourself, may I be strong and healthy mentally and physically.
No slowly you can imagine your loved ones, your family members, whoever close to you. Maybe someone in your family needs your blessings, thoughts. Imagine anyone who needs your thoughts, blessings, wishes and think, may my loved ones be filled with loving kindness. May they be free from inner and outer dangers. May they be able to take care of themselves happily. May my loved ones be well, may they be happy, may they be peaceful. Now slowly you can ex extend your loving thoughts beyond this room, all over the world. People are having a difficult, hard time. Sometimes we feel we want to help, but we can't do anything physically. But we can think of them, we can send up unconditional love. May all the living beings be filled with loving kindness. May they be able to find peaceful and healthy environments. May they be able to take care of themselves happily. At the same time, you can think of your difficult ones, if you have any in your life. If you have anyone, 
that you don't like, that you don't like to see, that you don't like to speak, you might don't like how way they talk, how they be, how way they behave. But it is always you can change how way you think. With having that advice, think. May my difficult people be filled with loving kindness. May they be well in mind and body. May they be able to find noble friends, noble guidance. Now again, please take a few deep, peaceful breaths. Breathe in peacefully and breathe out peacefully. While you are breathing in and out, feel the peace and harmony. Breathe in, I'm in peace. Breathe out. I am in peace. Part of our practice is looking inward. Try to understand the nature of our mind. When you sit peacefully and when you practice, you might notice thoughts are coming and going, coming and going. When you are practice, we are learning to observe your thoughts. We are learning to understand the nature of our mind. Therefore, when you see your inside, you can see your skillful mind your spiritual mind, your good qualities. When you see your qualities, appreciate it. Be happy about your good mind. Use your good mind, your qualities to help each other, to to add more love into this world. And same time you can see your unskillful mind that we all have. As I mentioned earlier, we need the quality of passion. If you see your unskillful mind, it is mean you can fix it. You have tools, you have practice. Therefore, please bring your hands together in front of your heart. And this moment, make a commitment to yourself to apply this practice every day 
at least two, three minutes. May not any difficulties come to you. May not any dangers come to you. May you be strong and healthy mentally and physically. May your loved ones, all the living beings, be well, be happy, be peaceful. Thank you so much. Slowly open your eyes. <clears throat> okay, let's start our chanting practice, page number four. <clears throat> okay, let's chant together. Namo tassa bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato Arhato Samma Sambuddhas Namo Tass Bhagavato Arhato Samma Sam Buddhan Saranam Gat Dhamman saranam gacchami Sanghan saranam <coughs> Buddhan saranam gacchami Dutte ampe dhamman saranam Gachami Dutti Ampe Sangang Saranam <coughs> Tati Ampe Buddhan Saranam Gachami Vat Sankara Upad Vaya Dhammeno Upad Jitva Nirujanti Te Sangupasano Sabbe Sattha Avera Hantu Sabbe Sattha Sabbe Sattha Anegha Hantu Sabbe Sattha Sukhiyattanam pariharantu Mano pubbangama dhamma Mano seta mano maya Vāsati vā karoti vā Tato nān dukkha man veti Chākkam Mano pubbhāngamā dhammā Mano seta mano maya Mano sa che 
ಪಸನ್ನ ಭಾಸತಿ mind is the foreign of all states mind is chief mind made are the if it the corrupted mind one should i this speak or act suffering follows caused by that as does the wheel follow the ox so mind is the foreign of all states mind is chief mind made are the if it the clear and confident mind one should i just speak or act <clears throat> we believe we believe in generosity towards others we believe the skillful generosity has many levels think generously speak generously act generously we believe generosity is the heart of our spiritual practice and this practice is allow us to become open we believe extending generosity to ourselves and others is a direct way of healing division my wish may i become at all times both now and forever protector for those without protection a guide for those who have lost their way a ship for those with an ocean to cross sanctuary for those in danger lamp for those without light <coughs> Okay good morning everyone How are you today Just very happy to see you all and thank for being here So this morning uh maybe some of you know what I am going to talk about So today I was thinking to talk about uh embracing changes So um I think it is a very interesting word interesting topic that we really want to think deeply So before that last few weeks I was reading this book so uh, how to focus by Tignath Han so this book has a really nice uh, little uh, little lessons to learn something so today I would like to t- uh, read the first one then uh, we can uh, start our discussion so the first uh, chapter is it is the t- title is really nice title what is the title attention and happiness are connected so what do you think about it it is true so let's let's see um what is he uh, saying in here mindfulness is the miracle that can restore wholeness to our dispersed mind calling it back so we can live peacefully each moment of life mindfulness always brings concentration and concentration brings insight so when you drink your cup of tea if you are concentrated and you focus your attention on it then the cup of tea becomes a great joy for you mindfulness and concentration bring about not only insight but happiness as well so what do you think so um, when i read this uh, little lesson many thoughts came to my mind even though the title attention and happiness are connected so when you when i brings all the buddhist teachings to here the one word we call attention the buddhist teaching is based on the word attention so we are always talking about attention attention 
So it is mean we are paying attention what we are doing. So uh, when we have the attention, so we are always um, doing something good for us, for others. So likewise, uh, in our life, we are, um, we are making choices. The choices are important. Our life is full of choices. The choices uh, makes you happy or unhappy person. So you come to here, it is your choice. When you come to here, you feel great, you feel happy, you feel relaxed. Or when you feel, when you go to different places, you have same different feelings. So when I think about my life, to be a monk, it, is, it was my choice. In the beginning, I didn't like much because of so much work. As a little monk, to study, to wake up early in the morning, to other, to do other everything. So I sometimes I didn't enjoy much. So, but eventually I was I really enjoyed it. So uh, it was my choice. It made me a happy person. And five years ago, moved to here, it was my choice. In the beginning, I was a little nervous because new country, new people but it makes me a happy person. So when you think about your life, there are many choices that you have done in your life. Sometimes um, people are re regretting about their choices and they are worrying, they are keep carrying. So like this, they don't want to put it down. So, but we, we need to learn to put it down, the choices that we made, which, which makes you unhappy. So therefore, uh, what I want to share with you, the attention, when you have that attention, you are always uh, finding good choices. It is very important for our life. So therefore, um, last few days I was thinking about uh, the word changes. Change, it is very important because nowadays the weather is changing, spring is coming, winter is done, and we are ready for the gardening and we are excited. People are graduating, going to new schools, and many things happening. Even though at the temple, many changes happening. So it is very interesting. So therefore, sometimes we are not ready to accept some changes. So sometimes we do accept, sometimes we are not. Sometimes we are worrying. So therefore, we, we have to learn how to accept those changes in order to find peace and balance in our life. Most people have this, um, this, this uh, concept. They're always telling, the Buddhist teaching, the Buddhist teaching always talking about impermanence, suffering, and people think it is it's negative. We don't want to hear those words, suffering, impermanence, anxiety. So those words people don't like. Maybe you, you, you see them. Maybe you had that same uh, concept in the beginning. Maybe you have that same idea still. Because whenever we come to here, it, we talk about impermanence. But you are here to not to listen to the word impermanence. You are here to listen to something else. But then we talk about impermanence. Then we talk about suffering. <laughs> Maybe you are then mad at us. <laughs> Why is talk about that? Because you are not ready to listen to those words. Um, so in Sri Lanka, <clears throat> when you go to do a Dhamma talk, usually it is an hour Dhamma talk. Sometimes, um, especially in full moon day, every temple, people come to meditate, people come to learn something. So they spend whole day at the temple on full moon day. So in my temple, it's a big monastery. Uh, so usually we have over or close to thousand people. So we have to do Dhamma talks, the discussions, meditation programs. We always talk about those words. What I, what I learned, people are very used to those words, they don't even care about it. So, but after I moved here, what I realized, people are kind of interesting, and they have different way of thinking about those words. Because um, I'm always struggling, because when I'm going to tell something to you, there's a gap always, the culture. So I have to think a few times, should I, should I tell this or not? So... Um, because how way I think, how you think, it's different. Therefore, um, sometimes we need to understand the deeper meaning of those words, the impermanence, the suffering, and other those negative emotions, those words. 
So when you are going to study the teaching of the Buddha, there are three words, the three three teaching that we call uh, three signs of existence. It is called impermanence, suffering, and non-self. Maybe you have heard about those uh, three teachings. <clears throat> so uh, when you think about our life, so I'm I'm not going to give you a deep meaning about those words because it has very deep teachings. If you want to learn. There are, you can find many resources to learn about those words very deeply. But I'm not going to uh, confuse you. So what I, what, I, what I would like to share with you, when you think about our mind, maybe this morning you have a peaceful morning. Maybe not. You're having a crazy morning. So the morning, it didn't make you a happy person this morning. Or maybe not. So when we think about our mind, as I mentioned when I'm guiding meditation, it's like an ocean. Sometimes it's peaceful, sometimes not. So um, our mind is same. So when you think about it, the thoughts are always coming, coming. It's it's the nature of our mind. If you are having, if you are having uh, like anger thoughts, resentment, those uh, negative emotions, right away try to understand the word impermanence. If you are an angry person, if you are having angry thoughts, you are not going to have those thoughts permanently. Do you? No. You don't want to be a grumpy, angry person at all. You want to be a happy, uh, funny person. Then people come to you and they are embracing, they want to talk to you. In order to uh, overcome these emotions, we have to think about the word impermanence. It is mean you are learning those thoughts are not permanent. They are impermanence. It is mean you are learning how to remove those anger, resentment, uh, hatred, those thoughts. So this is a simple approach of thinking about impermanence. But there are other ways we can think about the word impermanence because everything is subject to change. So if you think about that way, you can understand those thoughts are impermanence. They are not permanent. They are going to. You are going to learn to understand the kindness, compassion, those nice thoughts. So that is how you can apply the first word, impermanence. The second one is suffering, that we don't like. We want to be a happy person at all, every time. So um, when we think about it, again, if you think about the word angry, when when you are having angry moments, you are not happy at all. So um, I was telling... in. My first Dhamma talk was here. It was about anger, anger management, because in the past I was having a really hard time because of my anger. I was having a bad temper, so I did so many crazy things because of the anger. Then finally I was realized this is not good for me. Then I started to uh, talk about it. I started to share with people how you can manage your anger, how, can, how you can overcome those emotions. Then I do have some tools right now. If you, if you make me angry, but I do know how to manage myself. But in the past, I didn't. So whatever held close to me, I can throw it for you. Uh, throw it for you. <laughs> so I was like that. Then I was like, as a monk, this is not good for me. Because I'm telling people to practice kindness, compassion, then I'm angry monk. So it was bothering for me for years, actually. Then finally, I start to learn something. Then it, So at the same time, I was talking to myself when I'm talking to you. That's how I overcome those issues. So therefore, if you have those uh, emotions, just right away think, it makes me a bad person. It, it can bring me more suffering to me. Then uh, most people are having a hard time when you go to bed. Because what, what happened during the day, you are carrying into a bed. You are not ready to let go. So if you can let go, you can sleep well. You are having nightmares. So therefore, understand the same time, letting go, understand the word of suffering. And if you are having those bad emotions, right away put the word suffering. Those emotions, thoughts, not make me a happy person. So that's how you can apply the second idea, the suffering. The third one is, it is maybe, it, it has a different concept, different teachings about the third one we call non-self. So it is a very deep, deep uh, teachings, even though uh, for my, my, my English is not, 
enough to explain it is clearly. So if I tell you something, you will get confused. So, but, but how would, how would, how I would like to explain it to you? If you are having anger and hatred, those emotions, right away think, I am not an angry person. It is not belong to me. Maybe it is belong to someone. You can think like that. Then right away it can make you a relaxed person. So, um, therefore, these three teachings, impermanence, suffering and non-self, will lead you to understand the changes. Because whatever happening in your life, whatever happening around you, you are ready to accept. So, I was telling you, I, maybe most of you know, I was telling sometimes about my life story. So, <clears throat> suddenly my father passed away. So, I wasn't ready to accept it. But at the same time, I was going through that process. There was a, uh, I was learning so much about the word acceptance. This was very helpful for me, many situations to uh, overcome some hard moments in my life. Therefore, when you are dealing with about something, if you are not ready to accept those changes, you are always having those uh, bad moments in your life. Therefore, what I want to tell you, uh, the changes, sometimes we don't like, sometimes, sometimes we do like. So, try to accept it. Try to understand the impermanence, suffering and non-self. Think about it different way. At the same time, uh, the title was here, Attention and Happiness are Connected. Always think about that. And also, if you have the attention, you are always making good choices for you then that everything will help you to uh, embrace the changes. So that is my so talk, uh, small talk today. So do you have any comments? Any thoughts? Yes. Uh, I think so, because I was telling about these people, they were keep buying, I think we do have this book. Yes, the effort is very important for our practice too. Yeah, yeah. Effort is a part of the eight pole path. We call right effort. So it is very important for our practice. Thank you for sharing that. So we are here to some. We are here to find ultimate self, uh, happiness. So it sometimes it can change. Sometimes we are in a happy mood. Sometimes not. If you understand that, I think we can enjoy th- the moment. Yeah. Okay. And thank you for your questions. And I hope you enjoy today. And please uh, made right choices for you. Okay. Thank you so much. <coughs> Anybody know who Siddhartha is? Yes. Who? It's the baby over there. That's right. <laughs> we, we have the baby Siddhartha in house. Yay. <laughs> what a wonderful name for our, for our newest Sangha member. Uh, who was here for Bhante's talk last week? Okay, a handful of you. He... Uh, he, he did well uh, creating a little controversy and then leaving town. <laughs> so uh, last week he talked um, a little bit about his trip to Vietnam. So uh, for those of you who maybe follow him online, weren't his pictures so wonderful as he got to pilgrimage? He was there 15 days and got to go to all these sacred holy sites. And um, the story he told last week was a little bit, uh, was an abbreviated uh, longer story about the impact he felt going to Thich Nhat Hanh's uh, temple um, and being there for the first time since uh, Han had died and seeing so many people come there to pay respects, to practice. Um, and uh, in the conversations, he also relayed that some of the people were there because they believed it would bring them fortune and luck. Uh, and he left there um, really, really unsettled. 
and couldn't sleep uh, and spent a few days really what he noticed was the temple didn't didn't um, didn't have as many Buddha statues as it had Thich Nhat Hanh statues now. And what he noticed was in the conversations he had with people, uh, he talked a little bit about Jesus, and, and he witnessed people going there to, to practice and bow to Thich Nhat Hanh and to get good fortune from Thich Nhat Hanh. And uh, the unsettledness was that he really wanted to make sure that he was not Letting would never be about him. In fact, uh, we were laughing about the poster that's over here. <laughs> he said he wants to change that picture of him and make sure we get the Buddha up there. <laughs> um, so I know that this place is about about um, the teachings, not the teachers, right? And so there, there's there's some Buddhist wisdom and fables about how when we bow to the monks, we're actually not bowing to teachings, right? Um, and so uh, in in Bante fashion. He's wrestling with this. They're pilgrimaging through Vietnam, and he comes across a uh, a stone carver, a man who has made his whole life carving Buddha statues for temples, uh, and his primary medium is marble. And so uh, he was. Bante spent a lot of time conversing with him, and as no one here who knows Bante is surprised. Currently, as we speak, there is a seven-foot-tall Marba Buddha statue on a boat headed to a port here in America that will become our new front uh, uh, entrance. So we're going to have a brand new seven-foot-tall Marba Buddha statue. And the reason is because Bhante just could not settle himself down. And, and then he called me and he says, I've solved it. I said, well, how did you solve it? <laughs> and he said, I found a Buddha statue so beautiful, they'll never worship me. For the rest of eternity, <laughs> they'll come and w witness this Buddha statue, and they'll never remember me compared to its beauty. So it's on its way here. Um, it's seven feet tall, and it's marble. Those of you back in the day who were here when we received the Kuan Yin statue, we're going to need uh, maybe the entire Sangha to help us move it. <laughs> so uh, watch for announcements about that. And then secondly, speaking of that, that's going to be a little bit of a construction project because it will mean a whole new sign and a new front entrance with our new statue. Uh, but we're also replacing the staircase uh, out back over here. We're doing some uh, t some pretty significant tuck pointing and things, uh, and we're waiting for the weather to break. Obviously, this will all be probably after Osaka Day. But what I'm really saying is watch for announcements because we'll probably be redirecting you into the building. We're likely our entrance will be uh, unavailable for a couple of weeks. And so we'll be bringing you in the front or possibly in the back. So just watch our announcements as we do that. Uh, speaking of Wasaka Day, so uh, May 13th is our annual Wasaka Day celebration from 4 to 7. Uh, this is uh, the, the triple celebration of Buddha's birth, enlightenment, and death. And so uh, we do it every year. It's a really wonderful time. We have lots of visiting monastics coming this year to be part of our chanting and blessings, as well as our big parade around the square. We need lots of support, so we'd love you to sign up to be uh, parade helpers and food preppers and cleaners, if you're willing. And also, we are looking for monetary donations to support the monastics coming. So we have a sign-up sheet over there with a the QR code if you'd like to support a monk or part of a monk, getting them here, helping them with their food, their travel, uh, and our appreciation for their time. That'd be great. Uh, April 11th, we have our monthly art and meditation. Aaron, do you want to, are you here? Yeah, you want to talk about that real quick? Sure. Um, so I'm, my name is Aaron, I do the art meditation group once a month. Um, I'm an art therapist, and art is something that I really love. And I Excellent. Yep. Online and uh, there's QR codes on the board so you can sign up. Um, our Monday, April 10th is our uh, monthly blessing ceremony from seven to eight. And then this evening from four to six, we have seven tickets left for our vegan and gluten free buffet at the temple. 100% of the proceeds go to the temple and the monastics. Uh, so it's from four to six. We, you can purchase your ticket in the gift shop. There's seven remaining. Thanks everybody. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Happy Easter for those who celebrate. <laughs>